We we have five years. I think digital superintelligence will happen in my lifetime. If AI has a goal and humanity just happens to be in the way, it will destroy humanity as a matter of course without even thinking about it. No hard feelings. It's just like if we're building a road and an anthill happens to be in the way, we don't hate ants. We're just building a road. And so goodbye anthill. For me, the bottom line is that people who talk about risks with AI should not be dismissed as all oh, Luddites, scaremongers. They're doing safety engineering, this, where you think through everything that can go wrong so that you can guarantee that it goes right. And that's how we're successfully going to send our species into an inspiring future with AI. We created it. So I think as we move forward, this intelligence will contain parts of us. And I think the question is, will it contain the good parts or the bad parts? With each search, we train it to be better. Sometimes we type in the search and it tells us the answer before you have finished asking the question. You know, who is the president of Kazakhstan? And it'll just tell you. You don't have to go to the Kazakhstan national website to find out. I think you just have to consider, like even in the benign scenario where AI, if AI is much smarter than a person, what, what do we do? Yeah. What, what is that, what job do we have? Uh, believe in a benevolent AI force and cross sure. our fingers. <laughs> yeah, it's like even, but that, that's the benign scenario. Benign, yeah. benign scenario, the AI can do any job that a human can, but better. Yeah. That's the benign scenario. Baxter is a really good example of the kind of competition we face for machines. Baxter can do almost anything we can do with our hands. Baxter costs about what a minimum wage worker makes in a year. But Baxter won't be taking the place of one minimum wage worker. He'll be taking the place of three because they never get tired. They never take breaks. That's probably the first thing we're going to see, displacement of jobs. They're going to be done quicker, faster, cheaper by machines. We always do things we are good at. Sure, okay, well, what would be an example of something that humans are better than a computer at? And, and then let's see if that happens. We face a giant divide between rich and poor because that's what automation and AI will provoke, a, a greater divide between the haves and the have-nots. Right now, it's working into the middle class into white-collar jobs. IBM's Watson does business analytics that we used to pay a business analyst $300 an hour to do. There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. I think things are, things are very are de definitely going to go into kind of autonomous, or, 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 lo locally autonomous do, uh, drone warfare. This is where it's at, where the future will be. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, it's not I want the future to be this, it's just this is what the future will be, okay. is autonomous drone warfare. And at a, at a, at a local, local level, the I can't believe I'm saying this because this is, this is like dangerous, but it's simply what will occur is drones locally being autonomous. The thing that worries me right now that keeps me awake is the development of autonomous weapons. Up to now, people have expressed unease about drones, which are remotely piloted aircraft. If you take a drone's camera, feed it into the AI system, it's a very easy step from here to fully autonomous weapons that choose their own targets and release their own missiles. The expected lifespan of a human being in that kind of battle environment would be measured in seconds. Yeah, fighter jet area has passed. Okay. The Air Force just designed a $400 billion jet program to put pilots in the sky and a $500 AI designed by a couple of graduate students as being the best human pilots with a relatively simple algorithm. Do you think the current approaches will take us to general intelligence or do totally new ideas need to be invented? I think we're missing a few key ideas for general intelligence, general artificial general intelligence. But it's going to be upon us very quickly. 
and then we'll need to figure out what shall we do if we even have that choice that's another big part of artificial intelligence is to make them conscious and make them feel we build artificial intelligence and the very first thing we want to do is replicate us i think the key point will come when all the major senses are replicated sight touch smell when we replicate our senses is that when it becomes alive we we'll create an ai system that we can love and loves us back in a deep meaningful way like in the movie her i think ai will be capable of convincing you to fall in love with it very well and that's different than us humans you know, we start getting into a metaphysical question of, like, do emotions and thoughts exist in a different realm than the physical? And maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't know. And, and from a physics standpoint, essentially, if, if it loves you in a way that, is, that you can't tell whether it's real or not, it is real. It's a physics view of love. Yeah. <laughs> Are you attracted to me? What? Are you attracted to me? They give me indications that you are. I do? Yes. How? Micro-expressions. Yeah. Micro-expressions. The way your eyes fix on my eyes and lips. And it's similar to uh, seeing our world as simulation. There may not be a test to tell the difference between what the real world and yes. the simulation, and therefore, from a physics perspective, it might as well be the same thing. Yes. It, and there may be ways to test whether it's a simulation. There might be. I'm not saying there aren't. But you could certainly imagine that a simulation could, could correct, that once an entity in the simulation found a way to detect the simulation, it could either restart, the, you know, pause the simulation, start a new simulation, or do one of any other things that then corrects for that error. Eyebrow raised. This generation, technology is just surrounding them all the time. It's almost like they expect to have robots in their homes and they expect these robots to be socially intelligent. What makes robots smart? I think you would have to train it. But if you look angry, it's going to run away. Oh, that's good. We're training computers to read and recognize emotions. Ready, set, go. And the response so far has been really amazing. People are integrating this into health apps, meditation apps, robots, cars. We're going to see how this unfolds. We have to really be at the forefront of enforcing and designing these best practices and guidelines around how we build and deploy ethical AI. I like to say that artificial intelligence should not be about the artificial, it should be about the humans. The data itself is not good or evil, it's how it's used. We're relying really on the goodwill of these people and on the policies of these companies. There is no legal requirement for how they can and should use that kind of data. Really, it's just getting machines to learn by themselves. It's called deep learning, and deep learning and neural networks mean roughly the same thing. Deep learning is a totally different approach, where the computer learns more like a toddler, by just getting a lot of data and eventually figuring stuff out. The computer just gets smarter and smarter as it has more experiences. DeepMind turned to another challenge, and the challenge was the game of Go, which people have generally argued has been beyond the power of computers to play with the best human Go players. AlphaGo, which went from, in the span of maybe six to nine months, it went from being unable to beat even a reasonably good Go player, to then beating the European world champion, who was ranked 600, then beating Lisa Dole, 4-5, who had been world champion for many years, then beating the current world champion, then beating everyone while playing simultaneously. First they challenged a European Go champion, then they challenged a Korean Go champion. Please start the game. And they were able to win both times in kind of striking fashion. You were reading articles in the New York Times years ago talking about how Go would take a hundred years for us to solve. Then, uh, then there was Alpha Zero, uh, which crushed Alpha Go a hundred to zero. And Alpha Zero just learned by playing itself, and it, it can play basically any game that you put the rules in for. If you, whatever rules you give it, just, it literally read the rules, play the game, and be superhuman for any game. People said, well, you know, but that's still just a board. Poker is an art. Poker involves reading people. Poker involves lying, bluffing. It's not an exact thing. That will never be 
you know, a computer. You can't do that. They took the best poker players in the world and it took seven days for the computer to start de demolishing the humans. So the best poker player in the world, the best Go player in the world. And the pattern here is that AI might take a little while to wrap its tentacles around a new skill. But when it does, when it gets it, it is unstoppable. I do not think that a robot could ever be conscious, unless they programmed it that way. Conscious? No. 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 I mean, I think a robot could be programmed to be conscious. How are they programmed to do everything else? AI at the superhuman level, if we succeed with that, will be by far the most powerful invention we've ever made and the last invention we ever have to make. And if we create AI that's smarter than us, we have to be open to the possibility that we might actually lose control to them. How many years before you don't have to talk? If the, if the development continues to accelerate, then maybe like five years, five to 10 years. That's quick. That's really quick. But that's that's the best case scenario. No talking anymore in five years. Best case scenario. But um, 10, 10 years more like it. Really, in the first few versions, all we're going to be trying to do is, is solve their brain injuries. Um. So, so it's like, don't, don't, don't worry that it's not going to sneak up on you. <laughs> this, this, this will take a while. 25 years from now, what are we going to be? In 25 years, probably something. I would think there, there could be a whole brain interface. Like, almost all the neurons are connected to your, the, the sort of AI extension of yourself. If you have some. You know, if you have ultra intelligent AI, um, we would be, you know, so so far below them in intelligence that it would be would be like, you know, a pet. Basically. Pet. That's what I was thinking. Like a pet. Cat. Like a cat. Like a cat. Like a, cat. It'd be like a house cat. cat. Yeah, right. we'd be like the house cat. Right. I think it's incredibly important that AI not be other. It must be us. I'm certainly open to ideas if anybody can suggest a, a path that's better. But I think we're really going to have to either merge with AI or be left behind. So when maybe you or somebody else creates an AGI system and you get to ask her one question, what would that question be? What's outside the simulation? It's hard to kind of think of unplugging a system that's distributed everywhere on the planet, that's distributed now across the solar system. You can't just, you know, shut that off. We've opened Pandora's box. We've unleashed forces that we can't control and we can't stop. We're in the midst of essentially creating a new life form on Earth.